Hey y'all, it's Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm. We're out here working in the garden a little bit today, getting some fall plants in the ground and trying to do some beautification projects to uh, get ready for my daughter's wedding that's gonna be happening, happening on our property very, very, very soon. Um, but one of the things is that when I'm out here and I'm in the garden and I have the chance to actually put my hands in the soil, it's it becomes a very reflective moment for me all the time. I just, I get to thinking about things and it just really kind of encourages me to sometimes get those thoughts on camera. Um, I put out a video a couple of weeks ago and for me personally and for, for my YouTube channel and the size of my audience, it's, it's trending pretty well. Uh, maybe not compared to, you know, big YouTube channels, but for my channel, that particular video is, is trending very well for how long it's been out. And that video was about um, kind of first steps to homesteading. And I talked about having a change in attitude. So I actually just want to kind of continue on this theme and continue on this thought process. And today we're going to talk about more first steps to homesteading. And today we're going to talk about heart. Do you have the heart to homestead? As always, before we dive deep into this subject, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and go check out our website, rockin'8farm.com. So what exactly do I mean when I'm talking about having heart? Um, I think the first thing you really have to do when you're talking about do I have the heart is to ask yourself the question why. Because if your sole purpose for wanting a homestead is that you wanna get out of the city, well, you can get out of the city without having uh, gardens and row crops and animals and chickens to collect eggs. There, there's nothing that says that you can't have, you know, an acre or two or, or 50 out in the country and not raise livestock. There's, there's plenty of people that have been doing this lifestyle for a lot of years and they've gotten to the place in their lives where, you know, they're just, they're older and this isn't really something they want to do anymore. So then they let that 50 acres kind of go back to nature and, you know, they get rid of that um, agricultural exemption they had on the property and they get themselves a, a wilding exemption where, you know, they actually get a little bit of a tax break to let the trees grow back to their former glory and let the natural grasses come back and let the deer and the elk and the, the wild geese come back. So again, if you just want to get out of the city, there's nothing that says that, well, I don't want to live in the city, so I have to be a homesteader. So you really need to figure out why do you want to do this? Why do you want to live on a piece of property and be responsible for the lives of animals and plants and children, etc.? You know, for us, it was um, it was a lot of things. It was, you know, we're tired of all the hustle and bustle of the city and how fast paced your life is and how convenient things that are really bad for you are. Like, you know, uh, uh, the kids are busy with all these activities and we live in the city and we drive past four Taco Bells on our way home. So let's just eat out every single solitary night. We were also tired of living in a situation where you can reach outside of your bedroom window and knock on your neighbor's bedroom window. We definitely wanted a little bit more space. From a health standpoint, we were tired of not knowing where our food came from. Going into the grocery store and seeing our apples covered in wax and you know, all the food is absolutely beautiful and there's no imperfections whatsoever. So then you have the knowledge of the food waste that goes into that. And then you see all of, then you also think about like all the chemicals that are sprayed on those apples to make sure that they're so pretty and that they grow just right and that there's no bug damage. So then of course your natural first response is, well, I'll just go organic. But you know what? We also know what a racket the organic food industry can be. As somebody who tries to grow my food organically, I realize wholeheartedly that, you know, it is more expensive. It costs me more to grow you know, a few tomatoes than it does some sort of a mass farmer that has planes flying overhead and dropping chemicals on his tomatoes. So I get that it's going to be more expensive, but if you look at, and again, I'm also not a big like regulations guy, but there's a lot of people out there that are still using a lot of chemicals on their foods, but because they have the ability to work within the definition, they can claim to be organic. It's just, you don't know what you're getting if you're not growing it yourself. And then we can keep going into this. I mean, we can just keep digging y'all. Uh, you know, me personally, I'm a, I'm a bit of a naturalist. I'm a bit of an environmentalist. And 
I have a love for you know all animals, whether it's a, a deer in the woods or you know a, a, a one of the remaining bison walking across the plains, or whether it's my pigs and you know my chickens that are on my own property. You get to that place where you can't cover your eyes anymore and you can't pretend that um, the animals that are being grown out to be fed to people from grocery store racks those animals don't have a good life y'all I mean I like knowing that the pork that I'm about to eat um, comes from a pig that was loved every day of its life from birth until the day that it gave its life to feed my family I like knowing what it was that my pork ate and, and why the flavors that are in my pork are there. I like knowing that my pigs weren't raised uh, knee deep in their own feces for their entire life while being force fed and crammed corn into their gut to get them as big and as fat as humanly possible. So, I mean, I could keep going, but to be honest with you, we're not here to talk about me. We're not here to talk about why my wife and I homestead. We're not here to talk about the life that we want for our children. We're here to talk about the steps that you need to take if you think you want a homestead. So the reason I say you've got to figure out why is because if you're on the same track as me, if you want to know that your animals were, uh, that you're, you're consuming were treated humanely and were showing love and were fed good feeds, if you want to know that your fruits and your vegetables, while they may not be perfect and they may not be just totally beautiful because that grasshopper took that little nibble out of the side of your tomato, you know that it's not coated in chemicals and that it was raised in good healthy soil and that um, we weren't, you know, totally tilling the land and, you know, putting tons of carbon up into the environment. If those are the things that are important to you too, then that's great. It's great that you know why you want to do this because you're going to have to hold on to the whys if you're going to have the heart. You see, it's holding on to the reasons why you do this that help you to have the heart to continue on when a predator gets into your chicken coop and wipes out all 60 of your chickens. It's holding on to the reasons why you do this that ha helps you have the heart to continue going on when you know your mama Sal lays down on all nine of her piglets and kills them all. It's holding on to the reasons why you do this that allows you to take an animal that you've been raising for 10 months and that loves you and that you love back and be able to have the strength to take that animal to the processor. I mean, yes, you knew all along that the animal was, you know, destined for your dinner table, but when you raise animals the way that we raise animals with love and care and consideration, you need to hold on to those reasons why, or you're just not gonna have the, as I said, like the strength to, to follow through with, with the goal. If you can't hold on to the reasons why you do this, then you're not gonna be able to have the heart and the strength to get your butt out of bed at five o'clock in the morning to get out and do morning chores when you're feeling like absolute crud, but you've gotta get everything done because you know you have major projects you have to do that day. It's just, there's always something going on on a homestead and, and quite frankly, they are very often um, situations that could bring you like so much pain and, and so much sadness you know whether it's loss of animals or or doing chores on crutches because there's nobody else to do them I mean the animals have to eat it doesn't matter if you're sick it doesn't matter if you're hurt if you can't get somebody else to come help you you're doing it and holding on to the reasons why you do this is what gives you the, the like I said the heart the strength and the courage to get out there and do it it's that process of holding on to the reasons why you do this is what is really what makes this enjoyable because no matter how much somebody likes working outside, no matter how much somebody enjoys, um, you know, working with animals, there, there are times for everyone, regardless of who they are, where this is no fun and could quite frankly be unbearable and just make you want to quit. So what is it that gives you the heart to not want to quit when you're having the nasty, ugly days? It's knowing the reasons why you do this. So a slight recap, y'all. The earliest steps to getting your homestead, have a change in attitude. Stop saying, I would like to, but stop saying, I wish I could, and just start saying, this is what I want. How do I get it? 
Next couple of little steps into getting your homestead when you're talking about those early planning phases is why do you want to homestead and do you have the heart? Now in our next video in what is apparently becoming a series, we've gotten ourselves to a place where we know we want a homestead. We're, we're relatively certain that we have the heart because you might not know until you actually get on the homestead. We've had a change in attitude. We're pushing forward and we know this is what we want to do and we have our reasons for doing it. So our next video is going to be about building skills right where you're at while you're working on getting towards that homestead. So y'all, this has been Chris out here having some reflective thoughts in the garden with Rockin' 8 Farm. Until I see y'all again, please be happy and live healthy.